Oh, nothing, my lord. Or if I know not what. Was not that Cassio parted from my wife? Cassio? No, sure, I cannot think it that he would steal away so guilty like seeing you coming. I do believe twas he. How now, my lord? I've been talking with the suitor here, a man that languishes in your displeasure. Who is it you mean? Why, you're Lieutenant Cassio. Went he hence now? I sue, so humble that he hath left part of his grief with me to suffer with him. Good love, call him back. Not now, sweet Desdemona, some, some other time. But shall be shortly? The sooner, sweet, for you, for thee. No more, let him come when he will. I will deny thee nothing. Whereon I do beseech thee, grant me this, to leave me but a little to myself. Farewell, my Desdemona. I'll come to thee straight. Whatever you be, I am obedient. Excellent wretch. Perdition catch my soul, but I do love thee. And when I love thee not, chaos is come again. My noble lord. What dost thou say, Iago? Did Michael Cassio, when you wooed my lady, know of your love? He did, from first to last. What dost thou ask? Oh, but for a satisfaction of my thought, no further harm. Why is thy thought, Iago? I did not think he had been acquainted with her. Oh, uh, yes. And went between us very oft. Indeed. Indeed. Ah, indeed. Discernest thou often that? Is, is he not honest? Honest, my lord. Honest? I honest. My lord, for aught I know. What dost thou think? Think, my lord. Think, my lord. By heaven. He echoes me as if there were some monster in his thought, too hideous to be shown. Thou dost mean something. I heard thee say even now thou likest not that when Cassio left my wife. What didst not like? And when I told thee that he was of my counsel in my whole course of wooing, thou criedest indeed, and didst contract, and purse thy brow together, as if thou then hadst shut up in thy brain some horrible conceit. If thou dost love me, show me thy thought. My lord, you know I love you. I think thou dost, and for I know thou art full of love and honesty, and weighest thy words before thou givest them breath. Therefore these stalks of thine fright me the more. For such things in a false, disloyal knave are tricks of custom. But in a man that's just, they are close delations working from the heart that passion cannot rule. For Michael Cassio, I dare be sworn that I think he is honest. I think so too. Men should be what they seem, or those that be not what they might seem none. Certain, men should be what they seem. Well then, I think Cassio's an honest man. Nay, yet there's more in this. I prithee, speak to me as to thy thinkings, as thou dost ruminate, and give thy worst of thoughts, the worst of words. Good my lord, pardon me. Though I am bound to every act of duty, I am not bound to which all slaves are free to. Utter my thoughts, why say they are vile and false? As where's that palace where into foul things sometimes intrude not? As who has a breast so pure that some uncleanly apprehensions keep leaks and law days and in session sit with meditations lawful? Thou dost conspire against thy friend, Iago. If thou but thinkest him wronged and makest his ear a stranger to thy thought. I do beseech you, though, I perchance am vicious in my guess, 
As I confess, it is my nature's plague to spy into abuses, and oft my jealousy shapes faults that are not, that your wisdom yet, from one that so imperfectly conceits, would take no notice, nor build yourself a trouble out of his scattering and unsure observance. It were not for your quiet, nor your good, nor for my manhood, honesty, or wisdom to let you know my thoughts. What dost thou mean? Good name and man and woman, dear my lord, is the immediate jewel of their souls. Who steals my purse, steals trash. Twas something, nothing. Twas mine, tis his, and has been slave to thousands. But he that filters for me my good name robs me of that which not enriches him and makes me poor indeed. Ah, heaven, I'll know thy thought. You cannot, if my heart win your hand, nor shall not, whilst tis in my custody. <laughs> oh, beware, my lord, of jealousy. It is the green-eyed monster which doth mock the meat it feeds on. That cuckold, who lives in bliss, certain of his fate, loves not his wronger, but oh, what damned minutes tells he o'er, who dotes, yet doubts, suspects, yet strongly loves. Oh, misery. Poor in content is rich and rich enough, but riches fineless is as poor as winter, for him that ever fears he shall be poor. Good heaven, the souls of all my tribe defend from jealousy. Romeo and Juliet, this timeless and tragic tale was published in 1597. By now, we all know the doomed plight of the star-crossed lovers, as they are typically labeled. In this scene, however, we get to see more of the relationship between Juliet and her nurse. The two are bonded, seemingly even like sisters, both conspiring together at times, such as in this scene you're about to see, to help Juliet unite with her beloved Romeo. In half an hour, she promised to return. Perchance, she cannot meet him? That's not so. Oh, she is lame. Love's herald should be thoughts which ten times faster glide than the sun's beams, driving back shadows over lowering hills. And therefore do nimble pinion doves draw love, and therefore hath the wind swift cupid wings. Now the journey, now the sun is upon the highmost hill of this day's journey, and from nine till twelve is three long hours. Yet she has not come. Had she affections and warm youthful blood, my words would bandy her to my sweet love, and his to me. But old folk, many fain as they were dead, unwieldy, slow, heavy, and pale as lead. Oh God, she comes! Oh, honey nurse, what news? Hast thou met with him? Oh Lord, why lookest thou sad? Though news be sad, yet tell them merrily. Thou shamest the sound of sweet news, news by playing it to me so sour face. I am weary, give me leave a while. See how my bones ache, what a jaunt have I had. I would thou hadst my bones and I thy news. Nay, come, I pray thee, speak. Sweet, good, good nurse, speak. Jesus, can you not stay a while? Do you not see that I am out of breath? How art thou out of breath when thou hast the breath to say to me thou art of breath? The excuse that thou dost make in this delay is longer than tale thou dost excuse. Is the thy news good or bad? Answer to that. Say either and I'll stay the circumstance. Let me be satisfied. Is it good or bad? Well, you have made a simple choice. You know not how to choose a man. Romeo, no, not he. Though his face be better than any man's, yet his legs excel all men's. But for a hand and a foot and a body, though they not be talked on, I'll warrant their past compared. He is gentle as a lamb, but go thy ways, wench. Serve God. No, no, all this I did know before. What says Romeo? What says he of our marriage? <sighs> Lord, how my head aches. What a head have I. It beats as if it would fall in 20 pieces, my back or other side. Oh, my back, my back. Be sure your heart for sending me about to catch my death with jaunting up and down. In faith, I'm sorry thou art not well. Sweet, sweet, sweet nurse, tell me, what says my love? <sighs> Your love says, like an honest gentleman, and a courteous, and a kind, 
and they handsome, and I'll warrant be virtuous. Where is your mother? Where is my mother? Why, she is within. Where should she be? How oddly thou repliest. Your love says like an honest gentleman, where is your mother? Oh, God's lady dear, are you so hot, Mary, come up by trial? Is this the poultice for my aching bones? Henceforward, do your messages yourself. Here's such a coil. Come, what says Romeo? Have you got leave to shrift today? I have. Then he who hands to fair Lord's cell is a husband to make you a wife. Here comes the wanton blood up in your cheeks. will be scarlet shred at any news. He to the church, I must another way to, kept, to fetch a ladder by which your love must climb a bird's nest that night. I am the drudge and toll in your delight, but you shall bear the burden soon at night. Go, all to the church, he to the cell. <sighs> He's a high fortune, nurse, farewell. The Merry Wives of Windsor, a comedy by Shakespeare written in 1602. It's one of the playwright's lesser known works. When first discovering and then performing this endearing and hilarious story in college, I was fascinated to learn this story had been set to an opera no less than 10 times from the year 16, 1761, excuse me, all the way to 1929. Its themes are universal, marriage, jealousy, revenge, social class. The fat knight, Sir John Falstaff, relentlessly pursues two married women, Mrs. Page and Mrs. Ford, in an attempt to gain access to their husband's wealth. Mr. Ford learns of Falstaff's intentions and is consumed by jealousy. The two women proceed to trick both of their, uh, their husband and also uh, Sir John Falstaff. Um, what you'll see here looks a lot like the comedies that we see in present day. So enjoy, Merry Wives of Windsor. Mistress Ford, your sorrow hath eaten up my sufferings. I see you were obsequious in your love, and I profess you boiled to a head of credit, not only Mistress Ford, in the simple office of love, but in all the accoutrement, compliment, and ceremony of it. But are you sure of your husband now? He's a birding suit, Sir John. Whoa, gossip Ford, whoa! Step into the chamber, Sir John. How now, sweetheart? Who's at home besides yourself? Why, none but my own people. Indeed? No, certainly. Speak louder. Truly, I'm so glad you have nobody here with you. Well, why? Why, woman, your husband is in his old loons again. I'm glad the fat knight is not here. Why does he talk of him? Of none but him, and swears that the last time he searched for him, he was carried out. In a basket. I am glad the knight is not here. Now he shall see his own foolery. How near is he, Mistress Page? Hard by. At street end, he will be here anon. I am undone. The fat knight is here. Why then, you are utterly shamed. And he is but a dead man. What a woman are you? Away with him. Away with him. Better shame than murder. What shall we do? How shall I bestow him? Shall I put him in the basket again? No! I come no more in the basket. May I not go out ere he came? Alas, three of Master Ford's brothers watch the door with pistols, that none shall issue out. Otherwise you might slip away ere he came. But what make you here? What shall I do? I'll, I'll creep up into the chimney. There they always used to discard their burning pieces. Creep into the killing hole. Where is it? He will seek there, on my word, neither press, coffer, chest, trunk, well, vault, but he hath an abstract remembrance of such places and goes by them on his note. There is no hiding you in this house. I'll go out then. If you go out in your own semblance, you die, Sir John. Unless you go out disguised. How might we disguise him? Alas, today I know not. There is no woman's gown big enough for him. Otherwise, he might put on a hat, a muffler, a kerchief, and so escape. Good hearts devise something, an extremity rather than a mischief. My maid's aunt, the fat one of Brentford, has a gown above. On my word, it will serve him well. She's as big as he is. And there's her thrummed hat and her muffler, too. Run up, Sir John. Quick, Sir John. Mistress Page and I will look for some linen for your head. Quick, quick. We'll come dress you straight. Put on the gown the while. <laughs> I would my husband would beat him in this shape. He cannot abide the old woman of Brentford. Swear she's a witch, forbade her from my house, and I threatened to beat her. May heaven guide thy husband's cudgel. 
and made the devil guide his cudgel afterwards. But is my husband coming? Ah, uh, in good sadness is he. And talks with a basket, too. Howsoever, he hath had intelligence. Well, try that, for I'll point my men to carry the baskets and meet him at the front door as they did last time. Nay, but he'll be here presently. Come, let's dress him like the witch of Brentford. I'll first appoint my men what they shall do with the basket. Run up, I'll bring some linen for him straight. Hang him, dishonest varlet. We cannot misuse him enough. We'll leave a proof by that which we will do. Wives may be merry, and yet honest too. We do not act that often, jest and laugh. Tis old, but true. Still swine, eat all the drop. I would have been proved true, Sir Evans. Have you any way to unfool me again? Set down the basket, villain. Somebody call my wife. Youth in a basket. Oh, you panderly rascals. There's a knot, a ging, a pack, a conspiracy against me. Now shall the devil be shamed. What wife, I say? Come, come forth. Behold what honest clothes you have sent forth to bleaching. Why, this is lunatics. Mad as a mad dog. So say I too, sir. Come hither, Mistress Ford. Mistress Ford, the honest woman, the modest wife, the virtuous creature. Now the jealous fool to her husband. I suspect without cause, Mistress, do I? Heaven be my witness, you do, if you suspect me in any dishonesty. Well said, brazen face. Come forth. Hold it out. Sirrah, this passes. She'll find you not. Tis unreasonable. Will you take up your wife's clothes? Come away. Empty the basket, I say. Why, man, why? Sir Evans, as I'm a man, there was one portrayed out of my house yesterday in this basket. Why may he not be there again? In my house, I am sure he is. My intelligence is true. My jealousy is reasonable. Pluck me out all the linen. Master Ford, you must pray and not listen to the imaginations of your own heart. This is jealousy. Well, he's not here, I seek for. No, nor nowhere else but in your brain. Help to search my house this one time. If I find not what I seek, show no color for my extremity. Let me forever be your table's work. Let them say of me as jealous as sworn. Chat searched a hollow walnut for his wife's lemon. Once more, search with me. What ho, Mistress Page, what ho? Come you and the old woman down. Old woman? What old woman's that? Nay, hey, it is my maid's aunt of Brentford. A witch, a queen, an old cozening queen. Have I not forbid her my house? She comes of errands, does she? We are simple men. We do not know what's the past under the professions of fortune telling. She works by charms, by spells, and by the figure. And such daubery as this is beyond our element. We know nothing. Nay, come down, you witch you have. Come down, I say. Nay, good husband, good gentleman, let him not beat the old woman. Come, Mother Pratt, come. Give me your hand. I'll prat her out of my house. <laughs> you witch, you had, you bag, you poke, you run, you out, out. I'll fortune tell you. I'll conjure you. Why, are you not ashamed? I think you have killed the poor woman. Ah. Shakespeare's Macbeth, published around 1606, finds Shakespeare exploring the themes of witchcraft, prophecies, and of course, murder. In this first scene, we find Lady Macbeth's wait, lady in waiting and her doctor witnessing her sleepwalking, speaking of the awful truths that have been racking her heart with guilt. We follow that scene with 
a witch's scene. Macbeth has come to the witches, or as he calls them, the filthy hags, and asks for them to be honest with him, to give him his future, his prophecy. And they do, no matter how sordid the truth may be. Enjoy, Macbeth. I have two nice walks with you, but I can perceive no truth in your report. When was it she last walked? Since his majesty went into the field, I've seen her rise from her bed, throw her nightgown upon her, unlock her closet, take forth paper, fold it, write upon it, read it, afterwards seal it, and again return to bed. Yet all this in a most fast sleep. A great perturbation in nature. Perceive that's once a benefit of sleep and do the effects of watching. In this slumbery agitation, besides her walking and other actual performances, what at any time have you heard her say? That, sir, which I will not report after her. You make to me. It is most meet you should. Neither to you nor to anyone, having no witness to confirm my speech. Lo, you, here she comes. This is her very guise and upon my leg. Fast asleep. Observe her. Stand close. How came she by that light? Why, it stood by her. She has light by her continually. Tis her command. You see, her eyes are open. Ay, but their sense is shut. What is it she does now? Look, how she rubs her hands. It is an accustomed to action with her, to see thus washing her hands. I have known her continue in this a quarter of an hour. Yep. Here's a spot. Hark, she speaks. I will set down what comes from her to satisfy my remembrance the more strongly. Out! Damn spot, out I say! One, two, why then? Tis time to do it. Hell is murky. Fee, my lord, fee. A soldier? And a feared? What need we fear who knows it when none can call our power to account? Yet, who would have thought the old man to have had so much blood in him. Do you mock that? The Thane of Fife had a wife. Where is she now? What, will these hands ne'er be clean? No more of that, my lord. No more of that. You mar all with the starting. Go to, go to. You know you should not. She has spoke that she should not. I am sure of that. Heaven knows what she is now. He has a smell of blood still. All the perfumes of Arabia will not sweeten this little hand. Oh, 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 oh. oh. What a sigh is there. The heart is sorely charged. I would not have such a heart in my bosom for the dignity of the whole body. Well, well, well. I got be, sir. This disease is beyond my practice. Yet, I have known those which have walked in their sleep who have died holily in their beds. Wash your hands. Put on your nightgown. Look not so pale. I tell you yet again, Banquo's buried. He cannot come out on his grave. Even so? To bed. To bed. There's knocking at the gate. Come. Come, come, come. What's done cannot be undone. To bed. To bed, to bed! Will she go not to bed? Directly. Foul whisperings are abroad. Unnatural deeds do breed unnatural troubles. Infected minds with the death pillars will discharge their secrets. More needs she, the divine, than the physician. God, God, forgive us all. Look after her. Remove from her the means of all annoyance and still keep eyes upon her. So good night. My mind she's mated and amazed my sight. I think, but dare not speak. Good night, good doctor.
sting. Lizards like an owl that's wing for a charm of powerful trouble, like a hell broth boiled bubble. Double, double, toil and trouble, double, double, toil and trouble. Fire burn and cauldron bubble. Scale of dragon to the wall, the witch's mommy, my ankle. Of the ravine, salt sea shark, root of hemlock, diggity the dark, liver of blaspheming Jew, gall of gold, and slips of view, silver in the moon's eclipse, mouth of Turk and Tartar's lips, finger of birth strangled babe, ditch delivered by a drab, make the gruel, thick and slab, add thereto a tiger shodderin for the ingredients of our fodderin. Double, double, toil and trouble. Fire, burn, and cauldron, bubble. Cool it with the baboon's blood, then the charm is firm and good. By the pricking of my thumb, something wicked this way comes. <laughs> Open locks, whoever knocks. How oh, now you secret black midnight hat? What is it you do? A deed without a name. I conjure you, by that which you profess, how are you come to know it? Answer me. Do you untie the wits and let them fight against the churches? Do the yesty waves confound and swallow navigation up? Do bladed corn be lodged and trees blown down? Do castles topple on their warders' heads? Do palaces and pyramids do slope their heads to their foundation? Do the treasure of nature's germans tumble altogether, even till destruction sicken? Answer me for what I ask you. Speak. Demand. Answer. Say if thou'd rather hear it from our mouths or from our masters. All them. Let me see them. Pour in sow's blood that had eaten her night bear. Grease that sweat from the murderer's giving throat into the flame. Come, high or low, thyself in office, deathly show. Tell me thou, unknown power. He knows thy thought. Hear his speech, but say thou not. Macbeth. Macbeth, Macbeth. Beware, Macduff, beware the Thane of Fife, dismiss me enough. Whatever thou art, for thy good caution thanks. Thou hast harped my fear already, but one word more. You will not be commanded. Here's another, more potent than the first. Macbeth, Macbeth, Macbeth. At a three years I hear thee. Be bloody. Bold and resolute, laugh to scorn the power of man, for none of women born shall harm Macbeth. Then let me up, what need I fear of thee? But yet, I'll make assurance double sure and take a bond of faith. Thou shalt not live, that I may tell pale hearted fear of lies, and sleep in spite of thunder. What is this? that rises like the issue of a king and wears upon his baby brow the rounded top of sovereignty? Listen. 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 But speak not to it. Speak not to it. Speak not to it. Be lion metal, proud, and take no care who chafes, who frets, or where conspires are. Macbeth shall never vanquished be until great Burnham Wood to high Dunsinane Hill shall come against him. I will never be. Who can impress the forest? Bid the tree unfix us earthbound root? Sweet Bodemans, good rebellion's head, rise never till the wood of Burnham rise, and her high plate Macbeth shall live the lease of nature. Pay his bread to time and mortal custom. Yet my heart drops to know one thing. Tell me, if your art can tell so much, shall Banquo's issue ever reign in this kingdom? Seek to know no more. I will be satisfied. Deny me this, and an eternal curse fall on you. Let me know why sinks that cauldron, and what noise is this? Show. 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 Show his eyes and grieve his heart. Come like shadows, so depart. Thou too like the spirit of Banquo, down thy crown to sear my eyeballs, and thy hair, thou under gold bound brow is like the first, 
A third is like the former. Filthy hags, why do you show me this? A fourth, start eyes. What? Will the line stretch out to the crack of doom? Another yet? A seven? I'll see no more. And yet the eight appears, who bears a glass which shows me many more, and some that two full bowls and treble scepters carry. Horrible sight. Now I see. Tis true for the blood watered bank folk smiles upon me and points at them for his. What? Is this so? Aye, sir, all this is so. But why stands with Beth thus amazedly? Come, sisters, cheer me up his franks, and show the best of our delights. I'll charm the air to give a sound while you perform your into ground, that this great king may kindly say, our duties did his welcome pay. Where are they? Gone. Let this pernicious hour stand, yea, cursed in the calendar. 